guys, it's Crystal back at it again with another video. Today's video is going to be super short and simple, but I think it will be really helpful for a lot of you guys because it's all about how I was named a National Merit Scholarship winner when I was in high school and how you can go about that process and hopefully win National Merit too. I was able to put that scholarship money towards Columbia University where I am now and it's also just a great honor to be able to put on your college applications in the awards and honors section. So hopefully this will help you guys with figuring all that out and if you want more content all about how to succeed in high school and apply to college then definitely be sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Yeah, let's get into it. So in case you're watching this video and you're like, Crystal, what even is the National Merit Scholarship Competition? What are you talking about? So, National Merit is an academic competition for high school juniors that has actually been around since 1955. So, yeah, big stuff. And you participate by entering in the PSAT, which is basically an easier version of the SAT scaled down for high school juniors. So I know there are also the PSAT 8 to 9 and the PSAT 10, which are even easier because they're designed for 8th to 9th graders and 10th graders, but those do not count by national merit, so please be sure when you're registering, don't mix those up. So long as you are a high school junior or younger and you take the PSAT, the regular one, and you take off the little box, on the cover sheet of the exam that says you'll allow them to send off your scores to the National Merit Scholarship Corporation or NMSC, then you're golden. Now, that means that it's really important to study hard for this test because you have to score in the top three to four percent of all students who take it in order to even be commended, which is the lower two thirds of everyone in that top bracket of students who get any sort of notification or award from National Merit. And then if you want to actually be in the running for a scholarship, basically becoming a semi-finalist, then you have to score in the top 1% of all the students taking it, which is what I did. Just like the real SAT, the PSAT has three sections on reading, writing, and math, which cover information that you're theoretically supposed to know as a high school junior. And you guys can actually check out my video that I made about how I got 790 out of 800 on the actual SAT reading section, which is right over here if you want to check that out. So that was definitely a strong point for me when I was studying for the PSAT, so I focused a lot on math which I also really enjoyed and found pretty okay, but for me, reading was definitely my strong point. And I actually tutor students on the SAT and the PSAT and the ACT, and we see an average increase of 70 points, which is super exciting. So you guys can always feel free to reach out to me at my email, info at myivyeducation.org, if you need any help preparing for the PSAT, especially if you're rooting for that National Merit Scholarship. So don't hesitate to get in touch. I'd love hearing from you guys and helping you out. I would definitely recommend working with a tutor, especially if you're from a competitive state. And what I mean by that is, as I'm going to read from their website for you guys, NMSC uses a selection index. So the way that this works is it's a little bit different for each state. And you add your math, reading, and writing section scores, which each fall between 8 to 38. And then you multiply that sum by 2. And then basically the selection index ranges from 48 to 228. However, each state has a slightly different cutoff score, so of course, no one's going to demand that you have to get the absolute highest score of 228, but for one state it might be like, you have to score above 222 to be a semi-finalist, another state might be like, you have to score above 225. So it can really vary wildly depending on where you're from. I'm from New Jersey, which is known to be a really competitive state with really high cutoffs each time around, so I was busting my butt to prepare for that exam. So I ended up getting a 1490, and the PSAT scored out of 1520, so my selection index was something like 224 or 225 at the time, which was exactly what I needed. And the selection indexes can also change a little bit, even within the same state from year to year, just because the competitive level of the different students is always a little bit different, and how the exams are weighted can change a little bit, depending on whether it's a harder or easier exam, based on how many questions and which kinds of questions students got right and wrong. So I would really focus on trying to be your own best self and beat yourself as you're studying, beat your own scores, instead of trying to compete with your other classmates who are also trying to get NMSC and just try to do the absolute best you personally can. And once again, you can always reach out to me for help on that at any point. 
So because my score was above the state cutoff, I went automatically onto the semi-finalist round. And from there, I got to compete to become a finalist. Now, one thing that I feel like people never really explain so clearly is that semi-finalist is actually the highest level in the competition that you're actually ever gonna be able to put on your college applications. Just because it takes a really long time to get any sort of notification as to whether you've become a finalist or won a scholarship. I think it took around a year for me to get the notification that I had won a scholarship, no lie. But to even move on to the finalist round, you have to fill out an application where you have to put in all your school coursework over all your years of high school, and most importantly, you have to write an essay. Now, the prompt has been the same for the past few years and is still the same from when I did it, and I'll just read it to you guys. To help the reviewers get to know you, describe an experience you have had, a person who has influenced you, or an obstacle you have overcome. Explain why this is meaningful to you. Use your own words and limit your response to the space provided. Also, let me know in the comments if you guys want me to make a separate video actually reading my own National Merit essay, because I would be happy to do that. I have videos up reading my Cotton Up essay and my Columbia supplements, so I just don't want this video to be a million hours long, but I can definitely make another one, so just let me know. One thing that I think really helped me with writing this essay was that by the time I was applying for National Merit, I had already applied and been accepted to a whole bunch of different summer programs, which also required application essays. I'd been really lucky to get accepted to some of the top ones like Telluride Association Summer Program, Iowa Young Writers Studio, the Canyon Review Young Writers Workshop, and so I had had a chance to see in the application essays I wrote for those what was working and what I could use from that in my National Merit essay. So actually, this is kind of unorthodox, but hey, at least you won't hear it in any other video probably. My biggest advice is, and oh, this is actually why I'm making this video now instead of in like October or November when you actually take the exam. You wanna have plenty of time to apply for different summer programs and any other opportunities out there where you have to write essays so you can try out different language and anecdotes and details in those essays where you have to talk about your life and you can see what works, what doesn't and kind of workshop it before you even get to the point of applying for finalist. And then you can even recycle that later on for your college essays, which is what I did. It saves so much time and it helps you work smarter, not harder. So yay, that's the last round that you actually have to do anything for. However, even if you become a finalist, that doesn't necessarily guarantee that you'll actually win scholarship money. That depends a lot on which colleges you're applying to and which corporation-specific special scholarships you're eligible for. Lots of colleges that are selective, but not highly selective, like your state flagship schools or smaller liberal arts colleges, offer a ton of scholarship money to national merit winners and finalists. And they do that in order to sweeten the pot so that they can raise the numbers of students applying to them and lower their acceptance rates. Sometimes they even offer up to full four years for free, which can be amazing if you don't wanna take out student loans and or you need help going to college, which is just an incredible opportunity. But of course, that means that you actually have to be applying to those colleges in order to take advantage of those scholarships. Then there's the $2,500 standard National Merit Scholarship Corporation scholarship that they give out, which the corporation itself gives out instead of specific colleges, and they give them to $2,500 out of around 15,000 finalists. So I was very lucky to be chosen as one of those $2,500, and it's completely separate from whatever college you're going to. Obviously, as you guys know, I'm a Columbia girl. Columbia and all the rest of the Ivy Leagues do not give out any specific National Merit Scholarship money. Most highly selective colleges don't. So that was really the only National Merit Scholarship that I was personally eligible for. And I'm so grateful that they gave it to me and it's been just a wonderful experience. So moral of the story, even though your essay qualifies you to become a finalist, they still look at it when they come through the applications again to determine who's gonna be a winner. So you really wanna make sure that it's as strong as possible because it's getting you through two rounds all on its own. So if hopefully down the line some of you guys become semi-finalists and you need help with working on that application, once again, reach out to me. I have helped so many of my students write those essays and they've won scholarship money. I've actually helped students win scholarships of up to $50,000 each, which has been just so exciting. So definitely, yeah, drop me a line. I'd be so happy to help you guys out. So that's how I won National Merit and how hopefully you guys can do it too. Of course, I was incredibly, incredibly lucky to have support in my life. And I'm trying to give that back, which is why I make these videos and try and help you guys as well. 
So be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that notification bell so you're notified every time I post. And of course, like this video. And don't forget, vote for me in the FedEx Small Business Grant Challenge and share this video with your friends who are also trying to get national merit because friends help friends. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.